Hello all and welcome back to Zoological Point. My name is Kyle and welcome to Shark Week. And by week, I mean week-long episodic educational course. Please don't sue me, Scott Free. I'm trying to teach people about sharks too, but with a focus on facts and less on fear-mongering. The Lamniformes, or mackerel sharks, are an order of shark that date back to the middle of the Jurassic period similarly to the ground sharks. Some of the most iconic and recognizable species of sharks are members of this order, so let's not waste any time and jump right on in. Thrasher sharks are large oceanic hunters known for their large heterocircle fin. Heterocircle is a big fancy word for the top part of the tail fin in case you were wondering. Early scientists believed it resembled a tool called a thrasher, and so the name was born. I was a bit confused because I've never heard of a thrasher before, and upon looking up, I learned it's just a synonym for scythe. Now I'm upset because they're not called scythe sharks, which may be the most metal name for an animal possible, and it's definitely what I'm going to call my Viking metal garage band if I get around to learning an actual instrument. Back to the sharks. They use their tail to whip smaller fish, which stuns them on impact and makes eating them significantly easier. Shark. Pog. <laughs> The sole member of its family, the basking shark is the world's second largest living fish after the whale shark. Similarly to their spotted cousin, they are filter feeders and solely feed off of plankton and other microscopic marine invertebrates. Pretty cool to remember that the largest creatures in the ocean rely on the smallest. We're all connected! Fun fact, the scientific name of the basking shark directly translates to Great Nose Marine Monster, which is a fairly accurate description of the 7.9 meter long colossus. Similar to the monotypic basking shark, the megamouth is another family of one. It's incredibly similar to the basking shark, being a large filter feeding shark, yet it does have a few differences that make it truly unique. One notable feature of it is its mouth, hence the name, which is able to grow to lengths of over a meter wide. Very little is known about them, as the first specimen of this large lip elasma rank was only discovered in the 70s, but here's hoping we discover more about this mysterious shark. Here's the moment Spielberg and all you Discovery Channel junkies have been waiting for. The White Sharks. They're a family that consists of large oceanic hunters such as the Poor Beagle, which is named after the porpoise and the beagle for some reason, the world's fastest sharks, the Makos, and everyone's favorite, the largest predatory fish on Earth, the Great White Shark. Now look, I love Great Whites just as much as the next guy, but there's more to them than hunting fur seals and popping into cages to say hello to divers. For example, we recently discovered that Great Whites off the coast of South Africa rely on kelp forests to find food. This is something we've only discovered within the past few years. Just goes to show that we're constantly learning new information about species that we thought we knew everything about. Now as cool as Mr. Only Orcas Can Kill Me, my personal favorite member of this family is much, much cooler. Allow me to introduce you to the Salmon Shark. It's just like me. It's a resident of the Pacific Northwest that has a soft spot for sustainable salmon. However, unlike me and most other fish, it is able to maintain a sustainable body temperature regardless of its surroundings, which is a very useful skill for a species that often fishes in the Arctic Circle. When you think of sea monsters, you're probably thinking of the goblin shark because of its absolutely terrifying appearance and nightmarish feeding behaviors. Native to the deep parts of the world's oceans, this living fossil is known for its large scapel-like snout, small beady eyes, and their gorgeous pink skin. Whenever they feel like eating, they are able to shoot their mouth out towards their prey and chow down. I'm going to move on before I get even more nightmares. The same tiger shark, or if you're from Europe, the tawny nurse shark, is, to no one's surprise, neither related to the tiger shark or the nurse shark. How they got their name is anyone's guess. They're able to grow over 3.2 meters long, which is one of the larger species that can commonly be found in aquariums. Although their size is notable, their most recognizable feature is, without a doubt, their rows upon rows of teeth. While almost all sharks possess multiple rows of teeth, the sand tiger shark does one better and uses multiple rows at a time, which has led to the fitting nickname of the ragged toothed shark. The small tooth and the big eye sand tigers, which I jokingly refer to as the other sand tigers, are similar to the sand tiger shark, but possess enough differences to be their own family. For example, these sharks are more deep sea dwelling than the sand tiger, which prefers to live on tropical shores. However, the primary difference between these two and the original is the presence of posterior teeth. And before you say anything, posterior teeth just means teeth in the back of the mouth. It does not mean teeth in the b Anywho, these quote-unquote sand tigers have teeth in the back of their mouth, whereas the OG doesn't. 
Yet another solo family member, the crocodile shark is a common resident of the mesopelagic zone. Much like other species in the ocean depths, these sharks perform a daily vertical migration, which is a fancy way of saying they live in the deep during the day and ascend to feed at night. Fun fact, they get the name crocodile shark because they quote unquote snap like a crocodile when taken out of water. Isn't that what every shark does? I don't know, I'm not here to pick on scientists. Oh wait, that's exactly why I'm here. And that's the mackerel sharks. Now before I wrap up, I need to make something very clear. Yes, the megalodon was a mackerel shark. No, the megalodon is not still alive. Yes, I'm positive that they went extinct during the Paleocene. No, there's no chance that they're still out there. Yes, the Discovery Channel is aware of this, they just choose to mislead you annually. Thank you all so much for joining me and I hope to see you tomorrow when we go carpet shopping in the deep blue sea.